This is a demonstration of a swing in JavaFX integration. And it's highlighting a class called Phaser, which is a standard Java concurrency class, very similar to Countdown Latch and even to the Wait Notify mechanism. But it's something that's more dynamic, and it's going to suit this particular use case. So let's look at the application. Uh, I bring up a swing window, and I can press this button to bring up additional FX windows. And each FX window is going to be identified by a counting variable fx1, fx2, fx3. And what this program does is when I close each of these windows, the shutdown sequence is held up until the last of the windows is closed. And so over here, you can see in Eclipse, the project uh, process goes away. Now, running it again, I'm going to first close the swing window and then the FX window and demonstrate how this works in reverse. So the application will not shut down until the last of such windows is closed. And again, you see that it stopped. Uh, let's look at the code. Uh, in my main program, I'm creating an object of this class, um, SWFX main2. And I've got a few methods carved out, a startup, run, and a shutdown. Now, before the shutdown, I'm using a special phaser method called arrive and await advance. And what this means is it's going to act as a barrier halting all processing until everybody reports in that they're finished. Uh, and then the shutdown procedure finishes. In the startup sequence, I'm initializing some of the JavaFX um, uh, toolkit classes, and then I'm running. Uh, and the shutdown is just printing an error, uh, a um, output message here. Um, in the swing application, I start off by doing a waiter register, and waiter is my phaser object. So phaser had started out with a count of one, which is itself, and I add an additional uh, registration. Now, just speaking in terms of the swing application, let's not involve the FX window uh, in this run. I, if I just close this here, my process goes away. And what's happening is I register, and that holds up the barrier. And then when I do a window closed, I arrive and deregister. So this is where the dynamic part of the phaser comes in. If you're using something like countdown latch, you have to know the number of threads in advance which may be fine if you're dealing with a, a fixed set of, of, um, of threads, threaded activities. Well, in the swing application, I create the, the basic J frame here, and I provide this deregistration. This is a deregistration for the swing portion of the application. And I set visible to show it. Now, in the JavaFX, um, unlike the swing, there can be more than one of these um, FX stages. So what I do is when I press the button, I'm going to create a new FX object and show it. So let's look at that code. Well, just like the swing portion of the application, I am registering with the phaser. Now, this weak reference, this is a technique that I like to use to avoid graphs and potential memory leaks in the code. So it, the parent is passed in, but I don't like to keep a <clears throat> strong reference to the parent. I'd rather use this weak technique because that can give a cue to the garbage collection that I don't really care so much about this relationship, and it can help untangle some memory issues. Um, that's a digression that's not directly related to this discussion about concurrency, but it is the way that I do get a connection back to the phaser object that I'm working with for both the Swing and the FX app. So just like in the swing app, I register my, um, my window with the phaser. And just like in the swing app, when I close, I'm going to deregister. So this is something that is going to scale to any number of windows. So the use cases for this are going to be things where you might have like a multiple document pattern where you're able to bring up from, say, a main swing application, lots of different FX applications.
And where I think this is helpful is if you're working with a swing app and you're trying to make the transition to FX, um, sometimes classes like swing node, FX panel, they're just not enough. You really need something a little more fundamental in terms of the app startup, in terms of its interaction with the main. If you don't have a application subclass handy, this can be something that helps you synchronize everything and gives you a nice clean startup shutdown sequence.